Hi guys, many of you uh, asked me in the comments how did I move away the rotor from the, uh, from the stator, from the motor in the jet fan. Many of you are confused, they, you said that uh, oh, we thought that the Vemotech is so nice, so good, but now we see that jet fan is flying so great and uh, we don't know what to choose. So, let's, I would like to, to use this video to explain exact differences that I feel between the Vemotech and the jet fan. This is Vemotech 100, this is jet fan 100, it's just like 110, only a little bit smaller. And these are both amazing drives. This is made in Germany, this is made in Austria, but they're totally different. If I could compare those two drives to automotive market, to cars, I would say that the Vemotech is a Lexus. It's a very smooth, very quiet and very mellow drive. Uh, and the jet fan is a BMW. It's very strong, very rough. Of course, both of them very efficient, but these both drives are totally different. I think uh, this one, the Vemotech, is for very mellow flying, is for, uh, for relaxation and for people that really look for super quiet jet. And this one is definitely for more power, for more aggressive flying, is equally efficient like the, the Vemotech, but it's definitely stronger. And now I will dive into the details inside. Uh, the Vemotech has a very much more delicate rotor and also uh, the rotor is on the adapter that goes on the 5 mm motor shaft and this already limits you with the choice of motors, electric motors, because the strongest uh, 39 or 40 mm motors usually come with 8 mm shaft and this means that the Vemotech will not use it, so you're, you're uh, limited to smaller motors for the Vemotech and also because the shaft is thinner the cooling uh, of the of the rotor uh, in the motor is less because there is less conductive material for the for the air and this is very uh, for the temperature this is very important because a lot of motors that I killed this season I didn't destroy the destroy the winding inside the motor the the copper wire I demagnetized the rotor from the the eddy currents that are pushing the magnets inside the rotor, they heat up the magnets and the magnets demagnetize, which result in complete kaput, <laughs> complete death, 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 death of the motor. So, in two words, if you want to choose the drive that is super quiet, super mellow and smooth, go for Vemotech, because this is definitely quieter drive. But you can uh, expect power of uh, three, four, maybe five kilowatts, because the motor that you will use will be smaller, will be 450 grams, maximum 500 grams. And also the design of the shroud, this shroud is made completely of plastic. And if you use too strong motor, the motor will heat up and it will melt the plastic and you will lose the shroud and of course everything together. So, Vemotec very nice for a low power application. And the jet fan, Super nice for, of course, also low power application, a little bit more noisy, but very nice for high power application because uh, the size of the motor is exactly like in Vemotech, but because the rotor goes on the 8 mm shaft, you can use the big ones, the 550 gram motors, for example, from head, this is head, and uh, you can in partial load you can uh, go up to maybe even 8 kilowatts, 7 kilowatts, which is a lot, which gives you much more speed, much more power. And also the design of the shroud is carbon and inside there is an aluminium ring that holds the motor and there is way better cooling for the motor. So this drive is definitely better designed for high power applications. So if you think about breaking some speed records, definitely go for the jet fan. So, the difference is, you know, BMW, Lexus, you choose yourself. I don't say that either one is better than the other. They're both top quality drives in the world. I, I really cannot imagine having better drives than, than those two. They're just amazing. I concentrate on those two because I like them the most, because they're super fine, super nice. So you choose, mellow, power, your choice. And now, 
we're gonna answer the question of, um, that many of you asked, how did I move away the rotor from the stator, from the motor, to improve the sound of the jet fan and to make this nice whoosh, getting rid completely of this high pitch sound that sometimes happens. And this is very, very simple. You can see that my rotor sticks out by, I think at least six millimeters from the shroud, so it's outside. And you just unscrew it, I'll just show it in a moment, and you just slide it out, tighten again the screw, put the cup again, and it works. Of course, you need to balance it, but this in a moment. But to make it work, you have to design and 3D print a lip that is long enough to extend the shroud so the rotor is completely enclosed in the lip. This way it will be efficient. This lip is big enough, I have also bigger lips. And also, uh, one question guys, if you send me an email to send you STL files for some ideas that I designed. Uh, you know, you have to be really sure that you're gonna print it and you know how to print it because a lot of those things that I designed are super, super difficult to 3D print. Not easy and if you're an amateur only or you, you don't print too much, you will fail. So if you're proficient in 3D printing, then send me a mail, but if not, this is way too difficult. These, these designs are super, super hard to print. And some of you ask me to send you a 3D design for a shroud, for, for EDF or for a rotor for EDF. These parts are so extremely difficult to print. And also they require a lot of mechanical finish after the print and also chemical finish after the print to be even useful, not even top efficiency, even useful. So, if I send you these uh, designs and it will, just, it will be just a failure for you, you will be disappointed. So, so don't ask me, if you're really good, then you ask me. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the jet fan, which is the, the most important part of this tech talk. We will, this is fully balanced now, but I will ruin it and I will open it for you, just for you to see how easy it is, work, it is to work with this amazing drive. You need the hex key and just put it in, open, and this cup comes out very easily, super easily. And this is the nut. For this nut you need to have a key and you just open it by placing a key, holding with few fingers the rotor blades. They are super strong, so don't worry, if you hold with few fingers, you will not break them because they, they're more than 50% fiber, so they're super strong. And just open the nut. And when you open the nut, the, the rotor is still stuck. You need to knock it a little bit to loosen the rotor and the rotor is off. Super easy. When you'll be assembling, assembling it back again, it's very useful tip to use some thick grease but super, super thin film of thick grease and grease these surfaces of this adapter so it will slide in easier, but only those surfaces, because if you put grease on the inside part where the, where the shaft goes, you can forget it. <laughs> then you need to wash it in the bath of acetone to, to <laughs> and start again. And also I greased a little bit the threading of this adapter so the screw the nut, the nut goes easier and this way I'm able to tighten the, the rotor harder and this one was flying on I think 6 kilowatts, three videos before and, uh, and it was holding very nice. Why I said that you need to use some grease? Because when you slide out, when you slide out the rotor from the motor shaft you will not use the whole area of the shaft, you'll use just the tip. So it's super important that you tighten the nut super hard and this grease will help you with that. And now look inside the shroud. I 3D printed a 10 millimeter color that I glued with a CA glue to the aluminium housing of the motor and this gives me a 10 millimeter spacing. So now <coughs> I just slide in the motor all the way so it, so it, touches, so it touches this color and then slide out to two millimeters and then tighten with my hand the 
nut and then tighten it hard with the key and it's enough but tighten it as hard as you can really hard but holding few blades in total I will open it for a second again because I want to show you something this is very important on the market this is mot this is head motor high-end uh, technology motor very nice the 798 the biggest one and they come with 8 millimeter shafts and on the market you have two different types of motors available with the uh, Vemotec, the 100 and with the Jetfan 100 and 110 and these are like mostly two, two, two motor types these are head and hacker the hacker are kind of purple or pinkish purple and head are black and I strongly advise you to buy the head motor because of two reasons first three reasons first head motor is cheaper <laughs> with the amazing efficiency just like hacker second head motor has much longer shaft which allows to move away the rotor from the motor and if you use the standard if you use the, the normal hacker motor the purple one the shaft is so short that you cannot make this spacing so there is no place to move and the third important thing a hacker has the a, we built inside ventilator it's like a fan to cool the windings and cool the cool the the, the magnets of the rotor <clears throat> but the exit of hot air from the hacker motor is on the sides and here in Jetfan you have the aluminium tube that is blocking these outlets and here in Vemotec you have a plastic shroud that is blocking these outlets so hacker motor by definition doesn't have any cooling inside which is super bad because the most the, the most often what happens is demagnetizing the the motor the rotor from the inside so it's super super bad and of course you can drill your own holes in the metal housing or in the plastic housing but you know it's you buy a drive for 300 euro you want to have it ready and this is not ready so hacker has to solve this problem with Vemotec and with Jetfan because for now it's not solved I bought a few drives like this and they were all blocked there was no air circulation inside the motor which is super bad on contrary the uh, the head motor has uh, vents on the top which allows the air to, to travel uh, like through the top plate which is very nice and it works so this is it okay and last technical thing we will talk about is balancing the rotor bear with me it's a long video but it's worth it because every you know I've balanced so many rotors I've balanced also the rotors from um, freewing Avanti the original ones the freewing uh, freewing uh, EDFs and they usually come unbalanced so you, you, you unbox your, your plane you start flying and it's boo and it's making this horrible sound like a vacuum cleaner a broken vacuum cleaner and you can also the same way balance the, the rotor in the freewing Avanti as well as this uh, amazing jet fan and the Vemotec and it's very simple once you assembled once you assembled your drive okay it's freely rotating you connect it to the of course you need to do it with the lip because when you balance your rotor without the lip like this it will be so much turbulence and so much noise that you will not be hearing the the, uh, the vibrations and balancing is only based on feeling the vibrations by your hand so you place the the lip you glue it the best with just duct tape around just totally around I just have two pieces of duct tape but you need to do it around otherwise the, the, the air suction will suck out the lip because there is so much pressure okay and now you place this cone whatever you like it doesn't matter because it's very well balanced this cone is, is perfectly built of course you tighten the nut and you connect it to the ESC and connect it to the battery and, and use a servo tester or radio and receiver to start the motor and you start spinning it and you will feel that there is slight imbalance sometimes it's bigger sometimes it's less especially when you slide out the rotor one cm further 
it sometimes you can catch an unbalance. So then, then it's better to loosen the nut and move the rotor and tighten the nut again because sometimes it just catches the, the, the motor shaft unevenly. Okay, but let's say that there is a slight imbalance. You, you, you start with the motor, you, you wind it up to, let's say, 10, 20% and you feel like the, the motor is vibrating. Then you need to take a piece of duct tape, this is what I do, like that. It's just a piece of duct tape. I put it on the table. I take a knife, a hobby knife, and I cut cross strips like two centimeters by half a centimeter or one and a half centimeters by half a centimeter. And I stack them one on the other, let's say three layers first. And I place them on the side of the cone. And then I start the motor again with the, with the servo tester. And the motor rotates louder. So then I stick it out and move it in a different place. And motor and the, and the EDF is a little bit quieter. And I stick it in and stick it out a few times to find the sweet spot that the motor is the quietest. When I find it, I mark it on the, with a marker like here, on the rotor with the red marker, that this is the place that we need to add weight. It's just like balancing your, your wheels in your car, exactly the same. So here I have the red marker that says, this is the place that needs weight. And I remove the cone from the rotor and I stick those duct tapes underneath, like so, inside the cone. And they're inside and they're creating a weight. And then I just place it. Of course, I mark on the outside of the cone where the duct tape is, so I know. And I place it so, so these two lines meet. I tighten the nut, I start the motor again, and I feel that it's nice. I remove it, I remove the cone, I add one more strip of duct tape, I place it again, and it's quieter. And I do it as long as it gets even quieter, and when it gets louder, I remove, I come back again one strip, and it's kind of quiet. And then I play with the cone, rotating it half a cm, half a centimeter left, or half a centimeter right. Trying, of course, half a centimeter left, starting the motor is louder. Half a centimeter right is quieter. And I fine tune, so I find the, the place where the, where the EDF is the quietest, and I change the mark with the, with the red marker on my rotor blade for the new position. And when I found a new position, I start again with adding or subtracting the weight. So I remove the cone, I add one more piece of tape and I check it. Okay, it's louder. Then I remove this one that I just sticked on and I, I remove even a little, little bit more and it's quieter. In this way, I will fine tune. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes or 15 minutes, sometimes it takes one hour. But after many tries, you are able to tune the the rotor to such a degree that it's absolutely quiet. There, I never, never ever received a drive from the manufacturer, any in the world, that is so well balanced as you can do it yourself. Because they are in hurry, they don't have time to play, and they balance it, let's say, on 80%, which is good enough. The plane flies great, uh, the bearings are safe, and the sound is great. But if you balance it perfectly, the plane sounds amazing. It's just a different story. And you're all asking me why my planes are sounding so nice. Because every drive, every EDF that is flying in my jet is perfectly balanced. It's super smooth. And this way, when I'm coming to the field, I enjoy it. I really love flying my planes because it's quiet. It sounds great. All my friends are happy. It's, it's really good. So I advise you to do it. Okay, I hope you got it. Kind of simple, but it takes time. But it's very, very rewarding because uh, when, you, when you take off with a jet like that, it gives you shivers. It's nice. Okay, I think, oh, one more thing. I hope it will motivate Mr. Vemotek 
to go even further. This is the 100 drive, which is amazing. I love it, but it's only 100. And of course, everybody knows that the bigger EDF, the better efficiency it has. Uh, the jet fan has 100, but also has 110, 120 and 130, which is super nice. So, but I hope that Mr. Vemotek will, uh, Oliver <laughs> uh, Venmacher from Vemotek will watch this video and he will make bigger drive on exactly the same design because this design has a lot of values that no other, no other drive has. I have printed, 3D printed from nylon infused with carbon, exactly the same drive, the same rotor. This is a 100, this is a 120. I tried it, it works. It's a lot of work. To make this rotor ready for flying, it's a lot of work. It's for sure, it's, it would have to cost <laughs> like 1000 euro because it's so much work, but it's possible. The length of the blades, it doesn't disturb it. It's super nice. And I hope Vemotec will go for longer blades on the same hub. So let's, let's keep fingers crossed that it will happen someday and we can play with more drives. We can uh, make more tests. Okay, I think I spoke, I said enough. We have a beautiful day. It's completely almost, all, almost completely no wind and we have still some sunshine for maybe a flight or two. Thank you so much and see you later. Amps 3,288 watts.
check the battery state. 8,418 milliamp hours. 600 to go, so almost gone. We're going full throttle almost all the time. We gotta land. You could see how maneuver maneuverable is this jet. It's an excellent jet for for a first bigger jet. Flaps full, 102 kilometers per hour. 87 kilometers per hour, 9,213 milliamp hours, 75 kilometers per hour, fast and flat. So it was a nice flight. 197 kilometers per hour. Almost 200 kilometers per hour, super nice. Uh, almost seven minutes full throttle, so amazing. And uh, you could see the maneuver maneuverability of this jet. You can really turn hard. It's amazing jet for, for a first big jet for everyone, so I can recommend it to you. And very enjoyable. I enjoyed the flight a lot. We couldn't fly another flight because we have to go. I hope to see you next time.